Chapter 1. Under the Silverlight. The village of Irondale bustled with vibrant energy, the air crackling with anticipation. The moon had begun its ascent, casting a silvery glow over the cobblestone streets and quaint thatched rooftops. Everywhere one looked, lanterns swayed gently in the evening breeze, their soft, warm light mingling with the ethereal luminescence of the moon. Tonight was the annual Lunar Festival, an age-old celebration honouring the celestial body that governed their tides and lit their nights. Phelan, a young woman with tousled auburn hair and eyes that mirrored the moon's luminescence, walked briskly through the market square. Her arms were laden with bundles of wildflowers and a small package of sweets wrapped in crinkling parchment. She loved the festival not only for its enchanting decorations and music, but for the sense of unity it brought to the village. No matter one's troubles, tonight was a night to forget them and bask in simple joys. As Phelan made her way through the throng, she couldn't help but notice the extra bounce in everyone's step. The musicians were already tuning their instruments, and the scent of freshly baked bread and roasting chestnuts wafted through the air, tantalising her senses. She hurried to her family's modest cottage at the edge of the village, where her mother, Alara, awaited her return. Did you get everything, Faye? her mother asked, her kind face creased with a smile. Alara's hair, once as vibrant as Phelan's, had now greyed, but her eyes still held the same twinkling light, akin to the stars that would soon grace the night sky. Yes, mother, wild flowers for decorating the table and the sweets for later, Phelan replied, setting her parcels down on the worn wooden table. As they worked together, adorning their home with blooms and preparing for the evening's festivities, Phelan found her mind wandering to the legend that surrounded the lunar festival. It was said that on this night, when the moon was at its fullest, the veil between worlds grew thin, and those with pure hearts might catch a glimpse of the extraordinary. The village square transformed as night fell, the full moon now high in the sky, silverlight filtering through the leaves of ancient oaks that circled the market. A hush fell over the crowd as the elder of the village, a venerable man named Thrain, approached the central dice. His deep voice carried easily holding a rapt audience in its grasp. Tonight, we honour our guardian, the moon, whose soft light watches over us all, Thrain began, his arms outstretched to the heavens. The villagers echoed his sentiment with a cheer, and as the first notes of a lilting melody filled the air, the dancers took to the stage. Phelan watched in awe, only half listening as her friend Layla chattered excitedly beside her. Something about the moonlight tonight seemed especially potent, casting everything in a surreal, dreamlike quality. She felt a shiver of expectation run down her spine, as if sensing that something significant was about to unfold. Her reverie was broken by a sudden stir at the edge of the square. Heads turned, whispers rippling through the crowd like a gust of wind. Phelan followed the collective gaze, and her breath caught in her throat. There, standing slightly apart from the villagers, was a figure cloaked in dark fabric, the hood pulled low over their face. The stranger's presence was unsettling, yet magnetizing, an anomaly in the sea of familiar faces. Who is that? Layla whispered, clutching Phelan's arm, eyes wide with curiosity and a hint of fear. I don't know, Phelan replied, unable to tear her gaze away. The stranger did not move, standing still as a statue, only the faint flutter of their cloak betraying any sign of life. Thrain's voice faltered momentarily before regaining its steady cadence. Welcome, friend, he called out, his tone rich with the wisdom of ages. You have come on a night most sacred to us. Please, join our celebration. The cloaked figure lifted their heads slightly, and with a graceful, almost eerie fluidity, began to move forward. The crowd parted like water, whispers crescendoing into murmurs of speculation. As the stranger stepped into the full light of the moon, they reached up and slowly drew back their hood. A collective gasp echoed through the square. The figure, now revealed, was a woman of startling beauty, her skin pale as the moon itself, eyes the colour of midnight. Her hair, a cascade of ebony, framed a face that was serene yet commanding, otherworldly in its perfection. I am Selene, she announced, her voice a melodious contralto that seemed to harmonise with the very air. I have come seeking the one whose heart is tethered to the light of the moon. Phelan felt a sudden, inexplicable pull, as if an invisible thread connected them. 
her pulse quickened, and she knew, without understanding, that her life was about to change forever. Chapter 2. The Secret Garden The village was abuzz with tales of the mysterious woman, Celine, whose arrival had cast a spell of curiosity and wonder over Irondale. Phelan could scarcely focus on her daily chores, her thoughts perpetually drifting back to the enigmatic stranger and the words that had resonated deep within her soul. The full moon had long since waned, but its memory lingered like a whisper in the night. Celine had not returned to the village square since that fateful evening, and no one seemed to know where she had gone. Phelan, however, felt a strange longing, an urge to seek out the woman who had claimed a connection to the moon. She could not shake the feeling that their fates were intertwined. One crisp morning, driven by an impulse she could neither explain nor deny, Phelan set out on a path she had never taken before. The old forest, with its towering oaks and hidden glades, called to her. She had heard tales of a secret garden, a place of ancient magic and forgotten lore, hidden deep within the forest's embrace. As she walked, the canopy overhead thickened, sunlight filtering through in dappled fragments that danced upon the forest floor. The air grew cooler, filled with the earthy scent of moss and fallen leaves. A bird's song echoed in the distance, a hauntingly beautiful melody that seemed to guide her steps. Phelan's breath caught as she stumbled upon a break in the trees, revealing a hidden clearing. Before her lay a weathered stone arch, entwined with ivy and delicate white flowers that glowed faintly in the dim light. The archway beckoned, a portal to an unseen realm. With a mix of trepidation and resolve, Phelan stepped through the arch. The garden that greeted her was unlike anything she had ever seen. Rows of moonflowers and silver ferns lined a path that wound toward a crystal-clear spring at the centre. The air hummed with an energy that made her skin tingle, as if the very ground beneath her feet was alive with secrets. As Phelan ventured further, she noticed carvings on the ancient stones that bordered the garden. Symbols and cryptic runes spoke of a heritage that felt familiar, yet just beyond her grasp. She knelt beside one carving, tracing its intricate lines with her fingertips, when a soft voice broke the silence. You found it, the Garden of Selene. Phelan whirled around to find the woman standing behind her, serene and ethereal as ever. Selene's eyes held a warmth that belied her otherworldly presence, the midnight depths reflecting an ancient wisdom. This place, it's beautiful, Phelan murmured, rising to her feet. But what does it mean? Why am I here? Selene stepped closer, her graceful movements like a whisper of wind. This garden is a sanctuary, a sacred place guarded for centuries. It is said to hold the key to understanding one's true path, a gift bestowed by the moon itself to those chosen by its light. Phelan's heart raced, the words resonating with a truth she could not deny. Chosen? But why me? I'm just an ordinary girl from a small village. Ordinary? Selene's lips curved into a gentle smile. There is nothing ordinary about one whose heart is as pure and steadfast as yours. The moon has seen your spirit, Phelan, and it has chosen you to help restore the balance between our worlds. The weight of Selene's words settled upon Phelan like a mantle, the enormity of the revelation almost overwhelming. Yet, beneath the fear, a fierce determination kindled within her. She felt a surge of gratitude for the trust placed in her, and a deep yearning to uncover the mysteries that lay hidden in the garden. How do I begin? Phelan asked, her voice steady despite the storm of emotions swirling inside her. Selene extended a hand, her eyes locking onto Phelan's with a look of unspoken kinship. Walk with me. There is much to learn, and the journey will not be easy, but together we will uncover the truths that have been veiled for so long. As they walked side by side, Selene began to speak of legends and lost histories, of an ancient bond between the people of the village and the guardians of the moon. Phelan listened intently, each word unravelling the tapestry of a past she had never known but now felt deeply connected to. The hidden garden seemed to pulse with the rhythm of their footsteps, its secrets unfolding like petals of a nocturnal bloom. With each revelation, Phelan felt herself drawn closer not only to the enigmatic Selene, but also to a destiny she was only beginning to comprehend. In the heart of the secret garden, under the watchful gaze of the moon, two fates were sealed, bound together by the silver light that had first illuminated their path. Chapter 3. 
enchanted encounters. As the days turned into weeks, Phelan found herself spending every secluded moment in the secret garden with Selene. Their bond deepened with each shared story and revelation, a harmony between their spirits that defied the mundane constraints of time and circumstance. Yet, as their connection grew, so too did the complications that arose from the garden's ethereal magic. One evening, under the light of a waning crescent moon, Phelan and Selene sat by the crystal spring, the water's surface shimmering with an almost sentient glow. They had been discussing an ancient prophecy, one that hinted at a great upheaval to come, when a sudden rustling in the surrounding foliage drew their attention. Emerging from the shadows, with an air of quiet menace, were two figures unlike any Phelan had ever seen. One was tall and bathed in a soft, golden light, while the other moved with a shadowy grace, their form almost blending with the darkness. Who are they? Phelan whispered, her hand instinctively reaching for Selene's. Selene's expression was unreadable, her gaze fixed on the approaching figures. They are the Lumineth and the Umbralis, guardians of light and shadow. They are the keepers of balance, and their presence here can mean only one thing. The golden figure, the Lumineth, spoke first. Selene of the moonlit veil, you tread a dangerous path. The harmony of our worlds hangs by a thread. This bond you have forged must be tested. The Umbralis, voices soft and cold as a breath of winter air, added, Phelan, the mortal chosen by the moon, your heart will be weighed against the shadows that linger within. You both must confront your deepest fears if you are to remain on this sacred ground. Phelan felt a chill run through her, the weight of the challenge pressing heavily on her soul. What must we do? she asked, her voice tremulous but resolute. The Lumineth extended a hand, from which emanated a sphere of pure, radiant light. Enter the realm of reflections, where your innermost truths will be laid bare. Only by facing what lies within can you prove the strength of your bond. Selene squeezed Phelan's hand gently, her eyes conveying a silent message of courage. We will face this together, Phelan. Trust in yourself and in us. With a nod, Phelan stepped forward, her heart racing, but her resolve firm. As she and Selene passed through the portal of light, the familiar surroundings of the garden dissolved into an otherworldly landscape. They found themselves in a labyrinth of mirrored corridors, each reflecting different facets of their lives and fears. Suddenly, Phelan found herself alone, the mirrors around her showing flickering images of her past. Moments of joy, sorrow, and regret. A voice, her own yet distorted, echoed within the chamber. You are not worthy. You are weak, afraid. Phelan clenched her fists, her heart pounding louder than the taunts. I am not afraid, she whispered, searching for Selene. The mirrors twisted, showing her the night of the lunar festival, the faces of her friends and family, their expressions shifting into masks of disappointment and doubt. No, she said more strongly her voice steadying. I choose to believe in the light, in love, in what Selene and I have found together. The reflections shimmered and cracked, the voices fading as Phelan's inner strength illuminated the path forward. She felt a warmth behind her, and turned to see Selene, who had been faced with her own trials, emerging from her corridor. Relief and joy filled her as they reunited, their hands finding each other in the radiant labyrinth. As they stepped through the final passage, the oppressive weight of the trials lifted. The Lumineth and Umbralis awaited them, their expressions inscrutable. You have faced your fears and emerged whole, the Lumineth pronounced. Your bond is true and will continue to grow, but remember, the path is fraught with challenges. The Umbralis nodded solemnly. Harmony is delicate. You must protect it fiercely, lest the darkness reclaim its hold. With that, the Guardians vanished leaving Phelan and Selene alone in the moonlit garden once more. The stars above seemed to shine brighter, a silent testament to their triumph. Phelan turned to Selene, her eyes filled with gratitude. We did it, together. Selene smiled, her ethereal beauty softened by the genuine warmth in her gaze. Yes, together, and no matter what lies ahead, we will face it side by side. The enchanted garden, usually so quiet and serene, now seemed to hum with approval, its magic a constant reminder of the bond they shared and the trials they had overcome. As they embraced under the moon's gentle gaze, they knew their journey was only beginning, but with their hearts united, they were ready to face whatever came next. Chapter 4 
the serpent's kiss. The days following their trials in the realm of reflections brought a period of cherished peace for Phelan and Selene. The garden's magic seemed to nurture their bond, each quiet moment spent exploring its hidden wonders strengthening their connection. But beneath the harmony lay an unease, a subtle tension that whispered of challenges yet to come. One evening, as the stars began their nightly dance across the velvet sky, Phelan noticed a peculiar change in the garden. The normally vibrant moonflowers appeared wilted, their silvery petals drooping as if under a heavy burden. She turned to Selene, concern furrowing her brow. Have you seen the flowers? Phelan asked, her voice laced with worry. Something isn't right. Selene's gaze shifted to the moonflowers, her eyes narrowing in contemplation. It is as I feared, she murmured. The balance we strive to protect is fragile. There are forces at work, seeking to undo all we have achieved. Before Phelan could respond, a rustling sound drew their attention. From the shadows emerged a figure cloaked in deception, Layla, Phelan's childhood friend. But there was something unsettling about her presence, an aura of malice that was entirely out of character. Layla? Phelan called out, taking a hesitant step forward. What are you doing here? Layla's lips curled into a chilling smile. Oh, Phelan, you poor, naive girl. Did you think your secret garden could remain hidden from everyone? Her voice dripped with venom, eyes glinting with an unnatural light. Phelan's heart raced, confusion mingling with dread. What are you talking about? How did you find this place? A dark laugh escaped Layla's lips as she began to change, her form shifting and elongating into that of a serpent, scales glistening under the dim light. I have been watching you, waiting for the right moment. You see, this garden holds power, power that I intend to claim. Selene stepped protectively in front of Phelan, her voice strong and steady. You are not Layla. Who are you really? The serpent hissed, coiling itself in a display of arrogance. I am Seraphina, keeper of shadows and bearer of curses. You, Selene, have meddled in affairs beyond your understanding. And you, Phelan, dared to reach for a love that defies the natural order. With a swift, almost invisible motion, the serpent struck, its fangs sinking into Selene's arm. A blinding light erupted, and an anguished cry escaped Selene's lips. Phelan lunged forward, but the serpent vanished into the darkness, leaving only a lingering sense of despair. Selene, Phelan cried, catching her as she collapsed. The bite mark on her arm darkened, spreading an ink-like stain across her pale skin. What did she do to you? Selene's eyes fluttered open, pain and sorrow etched in their depths. It is a curse, designed to separate us. We must find a way to break it, or I will be pulled into the shadows forever. The weight of the betrayal and the looming curse crushed Phelan's spirit, yet determination burned brighter in her heart. She lifted Selene gently, guiding her to a stone bench by the spring. We will find a way, she vowed. I will not let you go. As Selene's strength ebbed, Phelan began a desperate search through the garden, looking for any clue that might lead to a cure. Her mind raced filled with fragmented tales of old magic and ancient remedies. She recalled an old woman in their village, Helena, who was said to possess knowledge of curses and their counterparts. With Selene safe in the heart of the garden, Phelan set off towards the village, her resolve unyielding. The journey back seemed endless, her thoughts a tumult of fear and hope. By the time she reached Helena's cottage, the moon was high, casting a pale glow over the worn wooden door. Helena, a wise and gentle soul, with eyes that seemed to see through time, opened the door before Phelan could knock. I have been expecting you, child, she said softly. Come inside. Phelan quickly relayed the events, her voice trembling as she described Seraphina's attack and Selene's suffering. Helena listened intently, her expression grave. Curses woven with such malice are not easily undone, she said finally, but there may yet be hope. Helena retrieved a leather-bound book from a dusty shelf and began to leaf through its pages. There is a ritual, one that requires great sacrifice and even greater love. It must be performed under the light of the next full moon, in the presence of one who shares an unbreakable bond with the cursed. Without hesitation, Phelan agreed to undertake whatever was necessary. Tell me what to do, she implored. I'll do anything. Helena's eyes softened and she placed a reassuring hand on Phelan's shoulder. Courage, dear one, you must gather these rare ingredients, she said, pointing to a list in the ancient tome. 
and when the moon is full, bring Selene to the heart of the garden. There we shall perform the ritual. With renewed purpose, Phelan set out to gather the required elements, each step infused with the power of her unwavering love. She knew the path ahead would be fraught with dangers and trials, but the thought of losing Selene propelled her forward with a fierceness that could not be quelled. The full moon loomed closer, its ethereal light a beacon of hope. Phelan vowed that, no matter the cost, she would break the curse and heal the wounds inflicted by the serpent's kiss. The garden, their sanctuary, would once again bloom with the purity of their love, stronger and more resilient than ever before. Chapter 5 A Dance of Shadows The full moon illuminated the secret garden in a luminescent blanket of silver, casting elongated shadows that danced with the breeze. Phelan had assembled everything Helena had instructed her to gather, each rare ingredient painstakingly acquired through tireless determination and unwavering love. Selene, weakened but held upright by Phelan's support, stood at the garden's heart, her ethereal beauty dimmed but not extinguished. Helena's voice was steady as she began the incantation, standing beside the crystal spring which now shimmered with an otherworldly glow. The echoes of the ancient language reverberated through the air, each word a note in a symphony of hope. Just as a glimmer of assurance began to take root in Phelan's heart, the serene night was pierced by a chilling laugh. How touching, a voice sneered. Phelan spun around to see Seraphina emerging from the shadows, her serpent form coiling gracefully around the garden's periphery, her eyes glittering with malevolence. Did you truly think you could break my curse so easily? Before Phelan could react, the garden seemed to shift and morph around them. The moonlight became more intense, and a cold, oppressive presence filled the air. The familiar surroundings faded, replaced by an opulent court bathed in midnight hues. The ground beneath them was now a polished onyx marble, reflecting the glistening chandeliers that hung overhead. They had been transported to the court of the Night Queen. Sitting regally atop a throne of spun shadows and moonstone, sat the Night Queen herself, her eyes twin pools of endless night. Her presence commanded an intimidating majesty, her gaze as cold as the darkest abyss. Welcome to my court, the Night Queen intoned, her voice both deadly and enchanting. You have trespassed upon realms that few dare to tread. Speak, and perhaps I shall grant you audience. Phelan swallowed her fear and stepped forward her voice resolute. Great Queen, we seek to break the curse placed upon Selene by Seraphina. Please, we implore you to grant us the means to restore her. A knowing, almost cruel smile curved the Night Queen's lips as she glanced at Seraphina. Did my serpent not inform you, mortal? The court is not a place of mercy, but of trials. To earn what you seek, you must partake in the Dance of Shadows. The court erupted in whispers, otherworldly tears exchanging sly, amused glances. Among them, Phelan noticed figures of light and dark, entities whose allegiances were as shifting as moonlight on water. Seraphina coiled triumphantly beside the Night Queen, her smirk deepening. Do you truly believe you can match the wits and guile required for such a dance? Mortals are so predictable. Ignoring Seraphina's taunts, Phelan nodded. I will do whatever it takes. The Night Queen clapped her hands, and a haunting melody filled the air, played by unseen musicians. Then let the dance of shadows commence. Phelan found herself swept into the center of the court, the ground beneath her feet transforming into a mirrored surface, reflecting both the light and darkness within her. Her partner in the dance was Seraphina, now in her human guise, every step a calculated move of deceit and danger. They spun around the floor, moving in harmony and opposition, each step testing Phelan's resolve and cunning. Seraphina thrived in the shadows, luring Phelan into traps of misdirection and illusion. But Phelan drew strength from the love she held for Selene, focusing on the light that guided her through the dance. Suddenly, in a daring maneuver, Phelan managed to reverse one of Seraphina's traps, causing the serpent to stumble. The court gasped, surprised by the mortal's audacity and skill. The shadows thickened and the light brightened, the two forces swirling around Phelan and Seraphina in a mesmerizing display of contrasts. Every moment became a balance of power, a test of alliances unseen. Phelan sensed movements at the court's fringes, murmurs of agreement and dissent among the courtiers. 
it was clear that not all present were aligned with Seraphina or the Night Queen's penchant for torment. In a mighty surge of effort, Phelan seized upon the moment of imbalance. She raised her voice, allowing it to carry her plea, not just to the Queen, but to all in the court. Hear me, denizens of the night. I do not seek to conquer your realms, but to save the life of one bound to the moon's grace. If there is still honour among you, if the purity of love holds any sway, aid me in breaking this curse. The room hushed, shadows wavering, as if uncertain of their place. Then, from the edges of the court, figures began to move forward, luminescent beings of light who had long been silent observers. They gathered around Phelan, lending their brilliance to counter the dark influence of Seraphina. Their presence was a silent vote of confidence, a testament to the truth of Phelan's words. The Night Queen rose, her expression inscrutable, and raised a hand to silence the whispers completely. The dance has concluded, she declared, her voice echoing through the vast hall. Against the odds, the mortal has shown resilience and courage, but even so, the laws of my realm are not easily swayed. A moment of unbearable tension ensued, the court holding its collective breath. Then the queen sighed. Very well. Though the serpent's curse is potent, the bond between you and Selene has impressed even the shadows of my court. I decree the curse shall be lifted, but at a price. Phelan bowed her head, her voice unwavering. Name your price, and it shall be paid. A year and a day of service in my court, the Night Queen pronounced. You will remain here, attending to the duties assigned to you, and by the end of that term, both you and Selene will be free. Nodding, Phelan accepted the terms, knowing that no price was too great to save Selene. The garden then reappeared around them, the familiar sanctuary restored in its entirety. The magic imbued in the garden intensified, glowing softly in acceptance of their commitment. Selene, her strength returning, stood tall beside Phelan, their hands clasped tightly. Helena smiled and nodded approvingly, the curse dissipating from Selene's arm like mist in the morning sun. As they embraced, Phelan felt a profound sense of relief and hope. Their bond had withstood the dance of shadows, and while their journey was not over, they had proven that love, when tested, could indeed conquer all. Chapter 6. Heart of the Dragon As Phelan served her year and a day in the Night Queen's court, she and Selene grew ever closer, finding solace in stolen moments and whispered promises. The court was a labyrinth of trials and responsibilities, but Phelan's unwavering love for Selene, and the hope of their future, sustained her through the darkest times. As the end of her service approached, they were summoned together, not by the Night Queen, but by an unexpected source. The time is near, Helena spoke, her voice echoing through the moonlit glade where she met them. You have endured much, but the final challenge remains. To break Seraphina's lingering influence completely, you must seek the heart of the dragon. A heavy silence settled upon them. The heart of the dragon was a fabled relic, its power said to rival the moon itself, yet it was guarded by a beast of legend, a creature whose wrath was as fearsome as its size. What must we do? Phelan asked her voice steady despite the chill running through her veins. You must journey to the dragon's lair, Helena instructed. The dragon demands a great sacrifice in exchange for its heart. Only with this relic can the remnants of the curse be fully lifted. Phelan and Selene shared a look of determination and unspoken fears, their resolve solidifying. They set out at dawn, their path illuminated by the first light of day. The journey was long and perilous their route taking them through dense forests, over jagged mountains, and across treacherous rivers. But their spirits never faltered, bolstered by the promise of a life free from the shadow of Seraphina's curse. As they ascended the final peak, the entrance to the dragon's lair revealed itself, a vast cavern mouth framed by ancient stones inscribed with warning runes. Stealing themselves, they entered, the air growing warmer, and the light dimmer as they ventured deeper into the beast's domain. The dragon's presence was palpable, a thrumming energy that seemed to vibrate through the very ground beneath their feet. At last, they arrived in a grand chamber, lit by the glow of molten rock, and encrusted with treasures beyond imagination. At the centre lay the dragon, an immense creature with scales that shimmered like liquid gold, and eyes that burned with a fierce intelligence. Who dares enter my domain? The dragon's voice thundered, 
reverberating through the cavern, its gaze fixed upon them, piercing and unyielding. With unwavering courage, Phelan stepped forward. Great dragon, we seek the heart to break a dark curse. Will you grant us the relic we need? The dragon studied them, its eyes narrowing thoughtfully. The heart of the dragon is no mere trinket. It holds the essence of my life, my power. To surrender it demands a sacrifice of equal measure. That is the price. Phelan and Selene exchanged a silent, anguished look. They had known the dragon's demand would be severe, but the reality of it was a heavy blow. What sacrifice do you require? Selene asked, her voice a whisper yet filled with resolve. The dragon's gaze softened, almost pitying. One life in exchange for the heart, a life willingly given. The words hung in the air, a cruel choice between love and duty. Phelan felt her heart seize, the enormity of the sacrifice tearing at her soul. There must be another way, Phelan pleaded. Is there no other price we can pay? The dragon shook its massive head. The bond between you is strong, but it is also your greatest weakness. Only a willing heart can balance the scales. Selene, her eyes glistening with unshed tears, stepped forward, resolve etched into every line of her face. I will give my life, she said quietly, her voice shaking but determined, so that Phelan might live free. No, Phelan cried, rushing to grasp Selene's hand. We will find another way. I cannot, will not, live in a world without you. The dragon watched silently as the lovers clung to each other, the gravity of the situation wrapping them in a suffocating embrace. Your love is undeniable, the dragon spoke softly, almost regretfully, but the law of sacrifice remains. Phelan turned to the dragon, her eyes blazing with a desperate hope. If our love is strong enough, can it not count as a willingness to sacrifice together? We are one heart, one soul. Can that not suffice? The dragon seemed to ponder this, its ancient mind sifting through the threads of fate and possibility. Such a bond is rare, it finally said. Perhaps there is another way. If you both can endure the trial of unity, a trial that will test the very core of your being, then the heart shall be yours without the exchange of life. Phelan and Selene nodded, their hands entwined, ready to face whatever this trial entailed. The dragon's eyes blazed brighter, and the cavern shifted around them. The ground beneath their feet became unsteady, the air thick with an unseen force. They felt their senses merge, their thoughts interweaving in a tapestry of memories, fears, and unwavering love. They found themselves standing on opposite ends of a vast chasm, the only way forward, a narrow bridge that seemed to flicker in and out of existence. To cross, you must trust completely, the dragon's voice echoed. Without fear and doubt, your unity will be your strength. Step by cautious step, they began to cross the bridge, their minds and hearts in perfect synchronicity, each feeling the other's resolve and fear. As they reached the midpoint, a shadow loomed, Seraphina's voice hissing in their minds, planting seeds of doubt and fear. You will fail, she sneered. Your bond is not strong enough. But with every whisper, Phelan and Selene drew closer, their love pushing back against the shadows. They reached the other side of the chasm together, the bridge solidifying beneath their final steps. The illusion shattered, and they found themselves back in the dragon's chamber, victorious. The dragon regarded them with a newfound respect. You have faced the trial and emerged united. The heart of the dragon is yours. From the depths of its chest, the dragon conjured a radiant, heart-shaped gem, pulsating with a luminescent glow. The relic floated toward them, settling into Phelan's outstretched hands. Take it, and with it, the power to break the curse completely. With gratitude and reverence, Phelan accepted the heart. As they left the dragon's lair, the final remnants of Seraphina's curse lifted, dissolving into oblivion. They returned to the moonlit garden, their love proven stronger than the darkest trials. Under the watchful gaze of the moon, Phelan and Selene embraced, knowing that their hearts, tested and true, had not only broken the curse, but forged a bond that no force, mortal or immortal, could ever sever. Chapter 7 The Crystal Lake With the heart of the dragon secured, and Seraphina's curse finally lifted, Phelan and Selene felt a profound sense of relief. Yet an air of unfinished business lingered around them. The garden, now vibrant and glowing with renewed energy, contained a subtle yet persistent pull that neither could ignore. It was as if the very spirit of the garden was guiding them towards one final truth. 
One evening, Helena visited them. Her eyes filled with a wisdom that never ceased to amaze them both. Your journey is not yet complete, she said gently. There is one place you must visit, the Crystal Lake. It lies deep within the enchanted forest, and it holds the final truths you seek. Without hesitation, Phelan and Selene set out, following the hidden pathways through the moonlit forest that seemed to light their way. The air grew cooler, the sounds of nocturnal creatures gradually fading into a serene silence as they approached the lake's edge. The crystal lake was a sight to behold. Its waters were as clear as the finest glass, reflecting the night sky with perfect clarity. The surface was still undisturbed, yet it seemed to glow with an inner light, drawing them closer with an almost magnetic pull. Helena's instructions echoed in Phelan's mind. The lake will reveal truths, she had said, but you must be willing to see them, no matter the cost. Taking a deep breath, Phelan stepped into the water, the chill striking her but not deterring her resolve. Celine followed, their fingers interlaced, hearts beating in unison. As they waded deeper, the water enveloped them, still and almost thick with the weight of the secrets it held. As they submerged fully, the world around them transformed. They found themselves in an ethereal realm beneath the water, where time seemed to stand still. The lake bed was lined with crystals that emitted a gentle luminescence, illuminating the surroundings with a soft, otherworldly glow. Before them appeared a figure of light, an ethereal being with a presence that exuded ancient power and wisdom. Its eyes, deep and knowing, settled on them with a gentle intensity. I am the guardian of the crystal lake, the being spoke, its voice like the harmonious ringing of crystal bells. You have come seeking truth. What is it you wish to know? Phelan and Selene exchanged glances, understanding that this was a pivotal moment. We seek to understand our purpose, Phelan began. The bond we share, why have we been chosen to bear this journey? The guardian's form shimmered, and the water around them began to ripple with images, scenes from their lives, moments both joyous and sorrowful, flashing before them like fragments of a forgotten dream. It is in your bond that destiny weaves its threads, the guardian revealed. Phelan, you carry within you the light of the moon, a life touched by ancient magic. Selene, you are the embodiment of the night's grace, a guardian bound to its secrets. Together, you represent the duality of existence, the balance of light and shadow. As the words sank in, Phelan felt a profound understanding settle within her. It was as if pieces of a puzzle were finally falling into place. But what is our role in this balance? she asked. You are protectors, the guardian replied. Your union strengthens the bond between our worlds, human and celestial. The challenges you faced were a testament to your commitment, ensuring that the harmony endures. The love you share is a beacon, guiding and preserving the delicate balance. Celine's eyes widened, emotions swirling within the depths. And what of Serafina? Will we ever truly be free of her influence? The Guardian's expression softened. Her shadow will always linger, driven by envy and spite, but your bond fortified by trials and love, is unbreakable. Together, you can withstand any force she might marshal against you. A sense of calm and purpose enveloped them. They understood now that their journey was not just about breaking curses or enduring trials. It was about embodying the very essence of balance and harmony, becoming stewards of the connection between their world and the celestial realms. The images faded, and the Guardian's form began to dissipate, leaving them with a final message. Remember, the strength of your love is the pillar of harmony. Guard it well, and the veil will remain lifted. The waters of the crystal lake began to recede, gently guiding Phelan and Selene back to the surface. They emerged, dripping and breathless, the moon's reflection rippling, as if to welcome them back. The forest around them seemed more alive, attuned to the newfound understanding they carried within their hearts. As they made their way back to the garden, they felt a deeper connection to the world around them. Every step was infused with purpose, every breath a testament to their enduring love. The garden, their sanctuary, greeted them with open arms, vibrant and lush, as if acknowledging their journey's end. Under the canopy of stars, Phelan and Selene stood at the garden's heart, their hands entwined, reflecting on the truths the crystal lake had revealed. They knew that their paths were forever intertwined, their love not just a comfort but a duty, 
a source of strength in the endless dance of light and shadow. With renewed vows and unspoken promises, they embrace their roles as guardians, protectors of the delicate balance, knowing that together they could face any challenge the future might hold. The moonlit veil had been lifted, revealing not just secrets, but a profound bond that would guide them through the ages to come. Chapter 8 Trial by Fire The realization that Phelan and Selene were protectors of a delicate balance between their world and the celestial had granted them immense clarity and purpose. Yet, with that clarity came the understanding that their journey was far from over. The promise made to the Night Queen still lingered, and they sensed that another monumental challenge awaited them. As they tended to the garden, now more vibrant than ever, a messenger arrived, a hawk with eyes that gleamed with intelligence far beyond that of an ordinary bird. It carried a scroll, sealed with an intricate emblem, a flame encircled by an arcane rune. Phelan retrieved the message and unfurled the parchment, reading aloud its contents. To Phelan and Selene, guardians of the moonlit veil, you are summoned by the ancient council of wizards who must test your worthiness. Only by facing the trial by fire can you prove your place as protectors of our worlds. Journey to the Ashen Spire. There, the true test begins. May your hearts remain resolute. The weight of the summons settled over them, but their resolve did not waver. They set out for the Ashen Spire, a formidable peak wreathed in perpetual smoke. The journey was grueling, each step up the craggy slopes a testament to their dedication and unity. As they climbed higher, the air grew hotter, the landscape transforming into a desolate expanse of blackened rock and swirling ash. At the summit, they were met by a circle of robed figures, their faces obscured by deep hoods. The Council of Wizards stood in eerie stillness, their presence commanding and ancient. The leader stepped forward, his robes shimmering with an iridescent glow. Phelan and Selene, he intoned, his voice resonating with power. You stand before the council to prove your worthiness. The trial by fire will test your strength, your love, and your resolve. Only those pure of heart and unwavering in their duty shall succeed. With a gesture, the leader summoned forth a colossal pyre, flames leaping into the sky. To complete your trial, you must retrieve the phoenix feather from the heart of the flame. Only then will you be deemed worthy. Phelan and Selene exchanged determined glances. They approached the roaring fire, feeling its intense heat prickling their skin. As they drew nearer, the flames seemed to roar louder, the challenge ahead daunting but clear. Summoning all her courage, Phelan stepped into the fire, feeling its searing heat envelop her. Yet, instead of burning, the flames seemed to part around her, forming a protective barrier. She felt Selene beside her, their shared love a shield against the inferno's fury. Within the heart of the flame, they saw the phoenix, a magnificent bird with radiant plumes of gold and crimson. The phoenix watched them intently, its eyes reflecting centuries of wisdom and power. The phoenix feather symbolizes rebirth and resilience, the bird's voice echoed through the flames. To claim it, you must face your deepest fear and embrace sacrifice. The ground beneath them shifted, and the flames transformed into visions of their greatest fears. Phelan saw herself alone, the world around her darkened, reflecting her deepest dread of losing Selene. Selene, in turn, was confronted by a shadowy reflection of herself, embodying her fear of failing to protect those she loved. But their love did not waver. They faced their fears together, hands clasped tightly, drawing strength from each other's presence. We are stronger together, Phelan whispered, her voice unwavering. No fear can break us. With renewed determination, they reached out to the phoenix, their hands grazing the magnificent plumes. The bird let out a powerful cry, and a single feather floated into their grasp, glowing with an intense, fiery light. The flames around them extinguished, and they found themselves back before the council, holding the phoenix feather aloft. The leader of the wizards stepped forward, his expression one of solemn respect. You have proven yourselves worthy, he declared. The bond you share has withstood the trial by fire, and your hearts have been tested and found true. As guardians of the moonlit veil, you are now entrusted with the knowledge and power to maintain the balance between our worlds. As the Council of Wizards dispersed, the leader handed them a talisman, an artifact imbued with powerful enchantments. 
This will aid you in your duty. Guard it well. Phelan and Selene descended the ashen spire, the talisman glowing softly in their hands. Their journey had strengthened their bond and solidified their purpose. They knew that challenges would continue to arise, but their love and unity would guide them through any trial. Back in the moonlit garden, they placed the talisman in a sacred alcove, a symbol of their enduring commitment. Under the watchful eyes of the moon and stars, they knew that together they could weather any storm and protect the delicate balance of the worlds they cherished. As guardians of the moonlit veil, their hearts, tested by fire, would forever remain resolute and true. Chapter 9. Twilight Revelations The tranquil beauty of the moonlit garden seemed even more enchanting in the twilight hours, the dying rays of the sun mingling with the silvery glow of the rising moon. Phelan and Selene, having returned from their arduous trial, found solace in these moments of quietude. The garden, ever their sanctuary, whispered secrets and welcomed them with open arms. As dusk settled, an ethereal light began to shimmer around the garden's perimeter. Shapes formed within the glow, figures long past, ancestors whose spirits had watched over the land for generations. Phelan and Selene stood in respectful silence as the phantoms of the past took shape, their presence both comforting and enigmatic. One figure stepped forward, a woman whose aura radiated wisdom and strength. Her eyes, a mirror of Phelan's own, held a timeless knowledge. I am Leora, she said, her voice like the rustle of autumn leaves. An ancestor and guardian of this garden. It is time you learned the truths that bind our fates. Selene grasped Phelan's hand, her eyes filled with curiosity and anticipation. What truths do you speak of? Phelan asked, her heart pounding with the gravity of the moment. Leora gestured to the centre of the garden, where the crystal spring reflected the twilight sky. The veil between the worlds is thinest now. Look into the waters, and you will see the tapestry of your past and future. As they peered into the spring, the waters began to shift and swirl, revealing a mosaic of visions. Scenes from long ago played out before their eyes. A time when the garden was newly blessed by the moon, and the first guardians, Phelan's ancestors, took their sacred vows to protect it. Leora's voice narrated the unfolding story. This garden has always been a sanctuary, a place where the balance of light and shadow is preserved. Our family's bond with the moon and its magic is ancient, stretching back to the dawn of time. The images shifted, revealing a young Leora standing beside a man whose eyes were the colour of midnight, a striking resemblance to Selene. This is Elion, Selene's ancestor, Leora continued. Together, we forged the first bond between our worlds, a union of light and shadow destined to safeguard the harmony. Selene's grip tightened on Phelan's hand as they watched the love between Leora and Elion blossom into a powerful alliance. But the peaceful scenes soon gave way to darker visions, an entity of pure malice cloaked in shadows, encroaching upon their paradise. Seraphina, Leora whispered, her voice tinged with sorrow. Once a guardian like us, but her heart turned dark with envy and ambition. She sought to disrupt the balance, claiming power meant to be shared. In the ensuing battle, she was banished, but her influence lingered. A curse placed upon our descendants, a shadow that would rise again. Phelan and Selene shared a look of understanding. The challenges they had faced, the trials and pain were echoes of that ancient conflict. But why us? Phelan asked, her voice trembling. Why were we chosen? Every bond requires renewal, Leora replied. Every prophecy demands new heroes. Your love, your trials, are the latest chapter in the story that began with us. You are the living testament to the enduring bond between our families, the embodiment of a promise spanning generations. The revelations weighed heavily upon them, but also provided clarity and resolve. They now understood their place in the greater scheme, their love not just a personal bond, but a crucial element in preserving harmony. What must we do to protect this balance? Selene asked, her voice steady and determined. Leora's form began to fade, her task complete. Remain true to each other, guard your love as fiercely as you guard this garden. Keep the harmony by remembering the past and facing the future together. Trust in the legacy that flows through your veins and the power within your hearts. As the spirits of the ancestors slowly dissipated into the twilight, 
Phelan and Celine felt an overwhelming sense of unity and purpose. Their love was more than an emotion. It was a force of nature, a pivotal element in the balance of worlds. They knew now that they were the latest guardians of a legacy that transcended time, the latest defenders against the darkness that sought to upset the harmony of the moonlit veil. With twilight deepening into night, they stood at the garden's heart, reaffirming their vows. They would protect their sanctuary, nurture their love, and honour the promises made by their ancestors. As the first stars appeared in the night sky, they understood that their journey, marked by trials and revelations, was part of a much larger tapestry, one woven with threads of fate, destiny, and undying love. In the moonlit silence, Phelan and Selene embraced, knowing that together they would face whatever the future might bring, and that their love would forever illuminate the path forward. The moonlit veil was safe in their hands, a legacy of light and shadow they were proud to uphold. Chapter 10. The Fey Council The moon cast a serene glow over the garden as Phelan and Selene stood at its heart, the twilight revelations still resonating within their souls. The tranquility of the moment was abruptly interrupted by a sudden gust of wind. Out of the darkness stepped a figure with an otherworldly presence, a fey messenger of striking beauty and grace. The Fey Council summons you, the messenger announced, her voice lilting like a silver bell. Your bond and actions have drawn their attention. Their judgment will determine your fate. Phelan and Selene exchanged a resolute glance, understanding the gravity of this summons. Their journey had been an arduous one, and now, the judgment of the Fey Council would be the ultimate test. Guided by the Fey Messenger, they ventured deep into the ancient forest, a realm where the mystical and the natural worlds intertwined seamlessly. The forest gradually thickened, the trees growing taller and more twisted, their leaves shimmering with an ethereal light. They emerged into a clearing where the air itself seemed to hum with magic. At the center of this enchanted glade sat the Fey Council, a circle of luminous beings, each radiating a different facet of nature's beauty and power. The leader of the council, a majestic figure adorned with a crown of crystalline flowers, rose to address them. I am Titania, Queen of the Fae. You stand before us to prove the worthiness of your love, a bond that has far-reaching consequences for both your world and ours. A hush fell over the glade, as Titania's piercing gaze settled upon Phelan and Selene. Your trials have been many, your love tested in fire and shadow. Now, we shall see if it holds against the scrutiny of truth and destiny. Titania gestured, and from the circle emerged a mirror-like pool of water, its surface perfect and still. Look into the waters of truth. They will reveal the purity of your hearts and the strength of your bond. Should you falter, your love will be deemed unworthy. Should you prevail, your love shall be celebrated, immortalized as legend. Phelan and Selene stepped forward, hands clasped tightly. They peered into the waters of truth, the reflections shifting to reveal scenes from their journey, each trial, each moment of despair and triumph, replaying before their eyes. They saw themselves facing Seraphina's curse, the dance of shadows, the quest for the phoenix feather, and the luminous revelations at the crystal lake. Every challenge, every embrace, every vow was laid bare. A figure of shadows emerged from the water's depths, Seraphina's visage, sneering and taunting. Your love is flawed, her echoing voice sneered. Phelan, your fear of losing Selene can overshadow your judgment. Selene, your protective instincts can lead to reckless choices. Can such a love withstand eternity's trials? Phelan's grip on Selene's hand tightened, her voice steady but fierce. Our love has faced darkness and emerged brighter. My fear strengthens my resolve, not weakens it. Selene nodded, her eyes reflecting unwavering determination. My protective heart is my strength not my folly. Together we amplify each other's virtues. The waters shimmered, Seraphina's image dissipating like mist before the morning sun. The scenes shifted to moments of pure, unadulterated love, a kiss shared under the moonlight, laughter amidst the flowers, silent promises whispered in times of peace. Their love, despite its flaws and fears, radiated a profound, enduring light. The Fey Council watched in silence, their expressions unreadable. Titania's gaze softened, and she turned to the other council members. A murmur of agreement passed through them, their auras brightening in approval. 
Phelan and Selene, Titania proclaimed, her voice echoing through the glade. Your love is rare and true, a beacon of hope and harmony. You have not only proven its strength, but also its purity and resilience. The Fey Council recognises your bond and deems it worthy of legend. A wave of relief and joy surged through Phelan and Selene. The council members rose, each extending their blessings, their touch imbuing Phelan and Selene with a shimmering, enchanting aura. Titania stepped forward, bestowing upon them a pendant, a delicate moonstone gem encased in silver filigree, symbolizing the eternal nature of their love. This pendant, Titania explained, is a token of the Fey. It signifies the acceptance and celebration of your bond. As long as it is worn, your love will be protected and revered through the ages. With a final graceful bow, the council began to fade into the surrounding forest, leaving Phelan and Selene standing in the glade, their hearts full and spirits lifted. The Fey messenger reappeared, her smile warm and approving. Your love has passed the ultimate test. Return to your garden, knowing it is now a part of legend. The journey back felt lighter, the air filled with a renewed sense of purpose and joy. The garden welcomed them back, the moon shining brightly overhead as if to honour their victory. They placed the pendant in a sacred alcove, its glow merging with the magical essence of their sanctuary. Under the moon's gentle gaze, Phelan and Selene embraced, their love now immortalised and protected by the ancient, enchanted forces they had encountered. They knew there would be more challenges ahead, but armed with the blessings of the Fey Council and the strength of their unwavering bond, they were ready to face anything together. The moonlit veil was not just a sanctuary, but a testament to their eternal love, a symbol of harmony that would inspire and protect future generations. Legends would speak of Phelan and Selene, guardians of light and shadow, whose love conquered all and brought balance to the worlds. And under that moonlit sky, their hearts beat as one, forever intertwined, forever true. Chapter 11, Blood of the Phoenix. The moonlit garden thrummed with life and magic, a testament to the trials Phelan and Selene had overcome. The blessed pendant from the Fey Council hung in a place of honour, its soft glow a constant reminder of their love's enduring strength. But even in their sanctuary, an undertone of unfinished business lingered. The story of the phoenix had not yet reached its conclusion, and its rebirth was imminent. One night, an unfamiliar tension charged the air, a pulsing energy that stirred the leaves and made the flowers shiver. At the garden's centre, where the crystal spring mirrored the moon's luminescence, a golden light began to shimmer, growing stronger with each passing moment. Phelan and Selene exchanged concerned glances, knowing that this was a sign, a call to action. As they approached the spring, the water began to churn and bubble, glowing with an intense, radiant light. From its depths emerged the phoenix, its majestic form renewed and resplendent, flames trailing like a flowing mane. The bird's eyes, deep and ancient, settled on them, filled with an urgency that belied its serene appearance. The time is upon us, the phoenix announced, its voice a harmonious blend of warmth and intensity. With my rebirth, hope is reignited, but your path remains fraught with challenges, shadows that seek to undo all that you have achieved. Selene stepped forward, her eyes reflecting the phoenix's fire. Tell us what we must do, great phoenix. We will fight for our future, for our love, and for the balance we protect. The phoenix extended one dazzling wing, revealing a single, gleaming feather. To secure your future and vanquish the lingering darkness, you will need the blood of the phoenix. This feather, when mixed with the essence of your union, will become a powerful elixir. But be warned, this task will test every fibre of your being. Phelan reached out, accepting the feather with reverence. We are ready, she said, her voice steady and resolute. What steps must we take? Journey to the summit of solace, the phoenix instructed, its feathers glowing brighter with each word. There you will find the chalice of unity. Only by filling this chalice with the combined essence of the phoenix and your love will you forge the elixir capable of cementing your bond and protecting it against all who wish it harm. As the phoenix's light began to fade, Phelan and Selene set out, hearts full of determination. The path to the summit of Solace was arduous, winding through treacherous valleys and thick forests cloaked in shadows. Yet, with each step, they drew strength from one another. 
their hands never parting, their hearts beating in unison. Days turned into nights, and nights into days. But at last, they reached the final ascent. The summit was a sacred space, a pinnacle bathed in celestial light, where the air was thick with the presence of ancient magic. At its peak stood the Chalice of Unity, a vessel of intricate design, its surface shimmering with spectral colours. Holding the phoenix feather aloft, Phelan approached the chalice. She carefully placed the feather within, its light mingling with the iridescence of the chalice. Now, she breathed, turning to Selene, we must add the essence of our union. Selene nodded, her eyes unwavering. With careful precision, they each took a small ceremonial blade, tracing gentle lines across their palms. Blood mingled, droplets of pure intent and love falling into the chalice. The mixture began to glow, the feather dissolving, infusing the liquid with an intense, golden radiance, the blood of the phoenix. A sudden tremor shook the ground beneath them, and from the shadows emerged Seraphina, her presence as dark and foreboding as ever. Foolish mortals, she hissed, her eyes burning with malice. Did you think I would allow you to succeed so easily? Phelan and Selene faced her, their resolve unshaken. We will not let you destroy what we have fought so hard to protect, Phelan declared, her voice ringing with defiance. This ends now. Seraphina lunged, her shadowy form shifting and coiling, but Phelan and Selene stood firm. They lifted the chalice together, their combined strength channeling the power of the phoenix's blood. The liquid within flared brilliantly, casting an incandescent light that engulfed Seraphina. A monstrous scream echoed through the peaks as the malevolent shadows were burned away, Seraphina's form dissolving into nothingness. The chalice's glow intensified, filling the summit with a blinding light before slowly dimming, the elixir within settling into a serene, golden glow. The phoenix reappeared, wings outstretched, its eyes filled with admiration and pride. You have done well, it praised. With the elixir, your bond is now fortified beyond any darkness, a true, eternal legend. Phelan and Selene, their spirits triumphant, carefully sealed the chalice and began their journey back to the moonlit garden. As they descended, the world seemed brighter, more vibrant. The shadows that once loomed now banished. In the sanctuary of their garden, they performed the final rite, sharing the elixir that symbolized the unbreakable unity of their love. The pendant from the Fey Council, the blessings of their ancestors, and the rebirth of the phoenix all converged in that moment of profound connection. Phelan and Selene stood beneath the moon, the light of their united hearts radiating through the garden, filling it with an eternal luminescence. They knew that their love, tested by fire and shadow, was now a beacon of hope and harmony. A love that legends would speak of for ages. A love that had truly become immortal. With the blood of the phoenix coursing through their veins, they were ready to face whatever the future held. Their bond a testament to the power of unity, resilience, and enduring love. Under the moonlit veil, they found not just victory, but the eternal promise of a future they would protect and cherish, together forever. Chapter 12. Eternal Moonrise. With the blood of the phoenix empowering their bond, Phelan and Selene felt a newfound sense of invincibility. However, they knew that their journey was not yet complete. The final battle loomed on the horizon, one that would determine the fate of their love and the balance of the worlds they were sworn to protect. As they prepared for what was to come, the garden seemed to anticipate the approaching climax, its vibrant foliage glowing under the watchful moon. Phelan and Selene stood together at the heart of their sanctuary, hands clasped, hearts synchronized, drawing strength from the very ground that had witnessed their trials and triumphs. That night, as the moon reached its zenith, a disturbance rippled through the air. The garden's tranquility shattered as a force of darkness enveloped the edges of their sanctuary. Seraphina, reborn even more powerful, emerged from the shadows, her form a swirling vortex of anger and envy. This is your final stand, Phelan and Selene, Seraphina spat, her eyes glowing with malevolence. Your love may have endured many trials, but it ends here. Darkness will prevail. Phelan stepped forward, her voice steady and defiant. We will protect the balance, Seraphina. Your reign of terror ends tonight. Selene, her eyes burning with fierce determination, joined Phelan. Our love is our greatest strength. It has survived curses, trials, and tests of fire. 
you cannot destroy what is destined to endure. A battle of epic proportions ensued. Seraphina unleashed waves of dark magic, shadows twisting and writhing, seeking to overwhelm the couple. But Phelan and Selene stood firm, their combined powers a radiant beacon against the encroaching darkness. Drawing from the ancient enchantments bestowed by the Fey Council and the Phoenix's blood coursing through their veins, Phelan and Selene channeled their magic. Together, they forged a barrier of light, repelling Seraphina's attacks and illuminating the garden with an unyielding brilliance. Seraphina shrieked in fury, her form shifting and growing more monstrous. You are fools to believe love alone can defeat me, she roared. But it was not just love, it was unity, resilience, and the unbreakable bond they shared. As the battle reached its zenith, Phelan and Selene felt a surge of power, the garden itself lending its magic to fortify them. In a final, desperate move, Seraphina summoned a cataclysmic force, intending to obliterate everything in her path. Phelan and Selene, their hearts beating as one, raised their hands to the sky, invoking the power of the blood of the phoenix. By the light of the moon and the strength of our love, we banish you, they cried in unison. A pillar of light erupted from the garden, piercing the heavens and enveloping Seraphina. Her screams echoed through the night, as the darkness within her was dismantled, piece by agonizing peace. The light grew in intensity until it consumed her entirely, leaving nothing but a faint whisper of shadow that dissolved into the moonlit air. As the light subsided, a profound silence settled over the garden. Phelan and Selene, exhausted but victorious, fell into each other's arms. The final battle was over, and their love had triumphed. The moon shone brighter than ever, its glow a testament to their victory. The garden, their cherished sanctuary, seemed to pulsate with renewed life, its magic flourishing under the radiant moonrise. From the moonlight emerged the spirits of their ancestors, Leora and Elion among them, their faces beaming with pride and joy. The phoenix appeared once more, its resplendent form a symbol of hope and renewal. You have done it, Leora whispered, her voice filled with gratitude. You have restored the balance and upheld our legacy. Elion nodded, his eyes misty with emotion. Your love is truly eternal, a beacon that will guide future generations. The phoenix extended its wings, showering Phelan and Selene with a cascade of golden light. With the final battle won, your bond is eternal and unbreakable. Your love will be celebrated in legend, inspiring all who seek harmony in our worlds. As dawn began to break, Phelan and Selene stood at the heart of their garden, basking in the glory of an eternal moonrise. They had faced unimaginable trials, their love tested beyond measure. Yet, through it all, they had prevailed. Their journey was one of legend, their love a wondrous force that had brought light to the darkest corners and harmony to the world. Under the eternal moonrise, they vowed to protect their sanctuary, to nurture the balance they had fought so hard to preserve, and to cherish the bond that had made it all possible. Hand in hand, Phelan and Selene looked toward the future knowing that together, they could overcome any challenge. Their love, now an eternal legend, would shine brighter than the moon itself, guiding them through the ages, united and unwavering. Under the eternal moonrise, their hearts beat as one, their love an unbreakable promise to the world and to each other. And as the first light of dawn kissed the horizon, they knew that their story, their legacy, was just beginning.